hello there everybody welcome to the verdict uh, once again we've got lots to go at this week uh, for it was a classic weekend at Newmarket and we're going to look back on the two big races that took place on Saturday and Sunday indeed we will look at five races in total from the Guineas Festival and we'll also go to Punchestown as well and have a look at three hurdling performances and contrast and compare those as those horses go into their summer break but we start at Newmarket on Friday with a new race first time this race has been run it was 1.15, it was a five furlong race for two-year-olds and none of these fillies had run before. Dramatised well back, nine to four favourite. Chasserelle was three to one and it was nine to two and bigger the rest. And I think we saw something very special in the opening race of this year's Guineas Festival for it was Dramatised who flew up the Roly Mile to gain a comprehensive four length success. She came from stall five, Malresia from one in second place and Chasserel was third from stall number three. A Little bit slow out of the gates, but there she is rolling along in front. She's got herself to the front under Danny Tudhope and from here on in, it is plain sailing for her. She makes every yard of the running and wins in a very quick final time. The time was one minute zero, 0.32. Now that can be compared with Miami Girl who was impressive on Sunday. She too a two-year-old debutant and we'll look at that race a little bit later on in the show. But this fast time was achieved by a filly who is going to go to Royal Ascot. I've got absolutely no doubt about that. She's very good indeed. This was a strongly run race according to the course track sectionals yet she finished off really well. The penultimate furlong was 10.99 seconds and her finishing speed percentage 106.54. So she's finished off the race 6.54% quicker than she ran the rest of it. So although it was strongly run, she found a very sharp turn of foot to go away and win comfortably. Her final three furlongs, 33.97 and she took a little bit of pulling up. This is an interesting angle because I think this tells us that there's more to come from her because she runs around a bit under pressure you'll see she's starting to edge to her left look at her gate there she's Danny Tullops trying to keep her straight but she's edging away to her left she's having a good look at things she flicked her ears backwards and forwards I think there's more in the tank and if there is well she's a live player for the Queen Mary at Royal Ascot make no mistake she's still hanging look she still wants to go left I think that's greenness mostly and I'd also like to point out how she moves. Her legs don't really bend much at the knee. It's a very straight action. And I think therefore she's always going to want decent ground. You can see that there. She doesn't curl her knee and hit the ground hard. She changed her legs there. And you can just see she skims across the top of the surface. I think she's always going to want fast ground and that will see her at her fastest and at her best. Look at her ears flicking backwards and forwards, not doing a right lot yet finishing off very strongly. To beat Malresia, who made late gains into second, Chasserelle should be noted for being quite green and hanging right in the race. But this filly coming back in, jig-jogging her way back in, was really impressive for Carl Burke, who has stated that possibly she'll go to York. She could run in the Mary Gate there, get a bit more experience into her. That fast track there would really suit her. And then after that, surely it's got to be uh, Royal Ascot for the Queen Mary, for which she's around about the six to one mark at the moment. That seems fair enough. She's certainly, in my opinion, the best filly that we have seen so far. And on debut, to run as fast as she did to produce the very good time figure that she produced means that she must be pretty special. Let's have a look at the 2000 guineas that took place at Newmarket on Saturday at 3.40 over the straight mile, of course, and Native Trail was the five to four favorite. Luxembourg for Aidan O'Brien, 9-2. Corribus was 5-1, to one, trained by Charlie Appleby, as was Native Trail. And Point Lonsdale for Aidan O'Brien next in at 11-2. to two. On paper, this looked to be a stellar renewal. And I think what we saw out there suggests that it is an above average guineas. I think the first three are very good horses. And it was Corribus who prevailed, getting the better of Native Trail and Luxembourg. There they are highlighted for you. Out on the wings, the two Godolphin horses, Caribus coming from one, from 15 uh, for Native Trail, and Luxembourg from four. Now, just keep an eye on Luxembourg in this early stage of the race. He's in here, and he does take a bit of a false step, a bit of a stumble. He might have clipped heels, not sure what, what happened. And that put him on the back foot in the early part of the race. And he was outpaced 
in the mid part of the race, but he came home very strongly and that's launched him to the fore of the Derby market. Let's find the principles then. Well, they're separated by a fair way of the track. Here's Caribus there and there's Native Trail. He's not getting much cover Native Trail, whereas James Dawler was able to get Caribus in and get him settled in behind the leaders. But there was a lot of daylight for Native Trail. He really couldn't get in William Buick. And I don't think that uh, helped him very much. It's been suggested in part that you needed to be over towards the far side and evidence of the racing over the three days did suggest that that played its part in, in some races. But I'm not so sure that if you swap their positions over and put Native Trail on the far side and Caribus this side, that the result would have been any different for Caribus has got a fine change of gear and he quickens up really well here and he sealed the race with an 11.31 7 furlong according to the course track sectionals and he did that in a race that was strongly run it was a good even gallop the finishing speed percentage 101.58 tells us all we need to know about that and it's here if you look at native trail he's being bustled along on this side of the track by william buick but over here Caribus just about still on the bridle. He's, he's got there a lot easier than Native Trail did, and now he will quicken up. And this is where he seals the deal and quickens in good style under James Doyle. Native Trail's last three furlongs, 35.67, Caribus 35.54. Not much between them, but that one single furlong of 11.31 sealed the deal for Caribus in the 2000 guineas and all the runner-up possibly wasn't helped by his track position, and he was going on again at the death, you'd have to say that Caribus was the best horse on the day wherever they raced. Luxembourg, what great late headway he made, for he was under pressure a long way out, but he rattled home. He's far left of your screen at this stage, and Ryan Moore really gets a tune out of him in the closing stages, and he comes home very strongly. The first three are top class racehorses I have no doubt about that I think Native Trail would have won a number of guineas that we've seen over the last few years yet he wasn't good enough to beat a Caribus it was James Doyle who beat his pal William Buick into second place with Luxembourg third Iden didn't run too badly for Roger Varian he'll be pleased with that horse who finished back in fourth place I think the Irish guineas would really suit Native Trail slightly stiffer mile and I think that will be right up his street. It'll be very hard to beat there. And Caribus, well, surely he now he will go to the St. James's Palace Stakes at Royal Ascot. And if he can get a strongly run race again and he can get some cover, his turn of foot might prove decisive. He's come home really strongly here under James Doyle, who was absolutely delighted with his first classic success in what proved to be a fantastic weekend for him overall. Nice shots these aren't they of um, two mates, two pals coming back in. William Buick I suppose you couldn't blame him for going with Native Trail after what that horse has achieved last year but James Doyle was the beneficiary of William Buick not choosing Caribus who wins on his three-year-old debut. A brilliant renewal of the 2000 guineas. Well, earlier on in the show, I highlighted a very good two-year-old on debut, Dramatised, who took the first race on Friday. Here's another good two-year-old filly in Miami Girl, who won on Sunday afternoon, first time up for the Richard Hannon team. Syndicated went off uh, 10 to 11, Beautiful Girl 16 to 5, and Miami Girl, not that well backed. She was a 5 to 1 shot, but she won like a good thing. This is where they came from. Miami Girl comes from two. Beautiful Sunrise from five, and the odds on favourite syndicated came from stall four. Let's try and compare this with Dramatise then. This was more steadily run in the early stages. You can see horses pulling for their heads in the early stages of this race, and it was quite steadily run. Whereas Dramatised race, they went a good even gallop, and Dramatise quickened up well off that even gallop. Here it's a bit messy early on, but it really winds up from halfway, and Miami Girl shows a taking turn of foot She's settled now. She was a little bit keen early on. She's just hidden away in there at this stage. And she quickens up in good style, according to the course track sectionals. Her final time wasn't quite as good as Dramatised. Dramatised, 1 minute 0 0.32. Miami Girl, 1 minute 0 0.85. But the races were run in, in different ways. Dramatised race strongly run, this steadily run, and it turned into a dash. But boy, did she dash in the closing stages. She came home very strongly, 
picking up well in the penultimate furlong. 10.49 was what she was able to fire there. That's a, a quicker single furlong than Dramatized achieved at any point through the race. And the finishing speed percentage of 107.56. So like Dramatized, she's come home very strongly. So which was the best performance? Probably Dramatized, because Dramatized was able to do it in a strongly run race. Both of them have achieved just about the same as far as the clock is concerned but dramatized went a stronger gallop early on and then quickened up off this this was a bit steadier and turned into a sprint but Miami girl is clearly very useful and she sprinted very quickly in the closing stages she's an eight to one shot for the Queen Mary dramatizes six to one so you pay your money and you, you take your choice and Richard Hannon well he's got his horses in fine form he had four winners on Sunday. He's going great guns at the moment and he should be followed um, with his yard in such good nick. Look at the way uh, she moves. She too, rather like Dramatized, will probably always want a decent ground and she looks very useful indeed. Often Richard's two-year-olds maybe need a run. Well, if that was the case and she comes on for this, well, there could be a fair bit more to come uh, from her. I'm sure we'll see her at Royal Ascot along with Dramatized, a clash that we'll really much uh, look forward to. When it comes to the 225 at Newmarket on Sunday, the Pretty Polly Stakes, I'm not going to pull my punches here. I think we saw a filly who can win the Oaks, and that filly is with the Moonlight. She was sent off second favourite behind Cronell, who was 6-5, to five, and it was 5-1 to one and bigger the rest. If she doesn't win the Oaks, well, this race has certainly put her very much in the picture for the big race. She's trained by Charlie Appleby, and William Buick was on board from stall number three. Second home was Machere, the outsider in the field, and uh, she came from six, Cronell came from seven. Early on, William Buick's happy to get a lead and sit in second place on this Frankel filly. She's by Frankel out of a Dubawi mare, and this is a massive step up on anything she has done before. She was quite good as a juvenile, winning on the all-weather, but she disappointed in listed company, but this, after over 180 days off the track, has stamped her as being more than useful. How was the race run? Well, it was run at a very good even gallop. The finishing speed percentage, 100.47, evenly run, producing a very good final time, two minutes, 2.57, just uh, 2.57 above the, uh, the magic two minute mark for this trip of a mile and a quarter. So this is a, a very good performance. Her final three furlongs, 36.6. Why is that relevant? Well, it's 0.2 seconds quicker than her nearest rival. She didn't become unbalanced in the dip, something that's often talked about. She looks a well-balanced filly who will handle Epsom no problem whatsoever. And if you watch the way she hits the line, she's going to get 12 furlongs. This is 10. Two more to go. Buick says go now. Cronell on the outside is immediately under pressure. Mashea, wide right, is beginning to run on. The rest are, are well beaten off off this decent gallop. They just couldn't sustain it. But she does more than sustain it. She clears right away from her rivals. Now, this might not be the strongest field you've ever seen for the pretty Polly, but watch what she does. Note how fast she's run. And think about this in the context of the Oaks and ask yourself whether you think eight to one is a fair enough price. Well, I certainly do. I think that's a very fair price indeed, given that she promises on pedigree to get better when she goes over further. Eased down marginally in the closing stages by William Buick. Uh, she beats uh, Machere into second place. People will crab the form because of what she's beaten. I'm not going to ask what she's beaten. I'm simply going to ask how fast did she run? And she ran very fast indeed off a good even gallop. And Charlie Appleby, well, he's got so many good horses in his care at the moment. This one might just go under the radar a little bit, and she might surprise a few when she gets to Epsom in June, for I'm sure that's where they will take her now. She is very much in the picture for the Oaks, and I like her chances very much indeed. In behind, I don't think there's any excuses for the likes of Cronell, who went off the short price favorite at six to five, just not good enough, and time may tell that those in behind were simply beaten by a very good filly indeed. Look how balanced she is as she goes into the dip. Some horses don't handle the dip. Most do really, but um, she handled it absolutely fine and she has come home really strongly according to the figures 
strong enough to suggest that an Oaks is within her grasp. And if that is the case, we'll all be walking in the moonlight if we take eight to one. Now on the verdict, we're going to take a look at the Thousand Guineas that took place on Sunday afternoon. And it was uh, a big day for James Doyle, for he won on cachet for the George Bowie team, who sent off a 16 to 1 shot. The market was like this Tenebrism, Chiefly Park winner, 11 to 4, Tuesday, 4 to 1. So the market dominated by Aidan O'Brien runners, and Malavath, the 6 to 1, and Wild Beauty for Charlie Appleby, 8 to 1. But it was cachet who put them all to the sword from an early stage in this race and made every yard of the running. There she is over on the far side jumping out of stall number three under James Doyle and he had a plan and that plan was to go straight to the front and go quite hard and what that has meant is that he has utilised what many jockeys have done in the past at the Roly Mile by letting their horses just roll along in front. It is something of a front runner's track. Remember homecoming queen for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore doing exactly this when she won the thousand guineas she won more impressively than cache did but she did the same thing booting along in front and she got them at it in behind and although the figures tell us she was absolutely legless in the final furlong she was on fumes the pedestrian 13.58 for her in the final furlong she had done enough in the earlier part of the race to draw the sting out of some of her rivals she went quite hard early on, James Doyle going through 11.2, 11.1 early. That's quick enough in the early part of the race, and it was quicker in the early stages than the 2,000 guineas. But now she's got them all at it, and to her credit, she keeps on galloping. She handles the dip well, and she runs on strongly until she gets to the furlong pole, and then she is completely done with. A finishing speed percentage, 96.32. Boy, is she slowing up late on there's that eighth furlong 13.58 but she's just got enough of an advantage to cling on it's rather like a dirt race where they go to the front they kick dirt in their rivals faces and they go as hard as they can for as long as they can and see if they can hang on despite being tired late on that's what she did here and it's to her great credit that she stuck to her guns and nothing could get to her in behind, Prosperous Voyagers run quite well, always prominent and stayed on well. Tuesday, far left-hand side of your screen, and Frankie de Tory. She looks like she could be an Oaks filly. But look to the right, Sheepskin Noseband and the horse in the white colours, Sandrine and Zelly. Perhaps on the wrong part of the track, that's debatable. But they both came home very strongly, and they both finished off the last three furlongs quicker than the winner. And I thought Zelly shaped very promisingly for the Andre Fab yard, running on well. Sandrine travelled well uh, through the race. Perhaps she's not necessarily a miler. She's got plenty of pace, but she saw it out OK. So those two horses to keep an eye on. Looking behind there in the red and blue colours, Tenebrism. What happened to her? She was clear on time form ratings coming into this race on the back of her Chiefly Park success. She didn't fire for me. She just didn't perform. And as soon as she came under pressure, she hung. I think we can't just blame the trip for she was beaten two out, maybe a bit further out, and she hung as well. I don't think she was right. And well done to James Doyle. What a performance from Cachet and indeed from Caribus. And he has two classics in the bag, his first two in the space of two days. And we should quickly mention George Bowie uh, as well. Not been training long. Uh, a man known for his uh, two-year-olds. In fact, he hasn't trained a two-year-old winner this season yet, but he has his first classic, and it's uh, great to see a young trainer uh, like him mixing it with the big boys. Well, it was a pleasure to bring you all the action from Punchestown last week. It was a sensational meeting with some top-class performances dominated by the Willie Mullins yard. And uh, we saw some horses uh, that may give Honeysuckle something to think about going forward. And I just wanted to assess whether she will go into summer quarters at all worried about some of these youngsters that are coming through. First of all, let's highlight what she did in the Irish champion hurdle. 
really worth uh, watching her again. She's such a splendid mare, 16 out of 16 now. But what did she achieve here? Well, this was a strongly run race, courtesy of San Juan. They did not hang about at all. And she showed her customary turn of foot to surge to the front, going down to the last. She bunny hopped that a little bit, and then she stayed on strongly to win going away. It's a very fast time, three minutes, 52.5 for Honeysuckle. Uh, I'm right up there, I think, with some of her other performances and certainly better this time around than she was when winning the race last year. Uh, so that tells us she goes into summer quarters in fine fettle. She goes for her break on the back of a really good performance and she's going to be a tough nut to crack next year. Could this be a horse who could give us something to think about? State man who won the grade one novice over two miles and three furlongs. Why do I highlight him if he's a two and a half mile horse? Well, I highlight him because one, he's got a turn of foot there, held up by Paul Townend, quickens past his rivals in good style, and two, because the Willie Mullins team suggested that he might go down the champion hurdle route uh, next year. This was quite a steadily run race. They didn't go particularly fast in this, but he looks a really smart young prospect and he, rather like Honeysuckle, has got a pretty good turn of foot uh, for a hurdler and Paul Tannen clearly likes him. 4.48.2 uh, was the time, which in, in context of what happened at Punchestan last week, that was quite steady, it was quite slow, but he quickened up very well and champion hurdle route probably for state man next up and he'll take Honeysuckle on, no doubt. There was also one other good uh, performance from a youngster, the four-year-old of Vauban, who was absolutely cantered all over field door and won as he liked. He has a very high cruising speed and he brushed his rivals aside, no problem at all. Now the ground was described the same this day as it was when Honeysuckle won, good to soft. His time was about 15 seconds slower than Honeysuckle, so he got a more steadily run race, but visually he was really really impressive but 15 seconds slower than Honeysuckle one wonders what he could do in a more strongly run race that's the big question that he's got to answer four minutes 6.9 being his time remind you of Honeysuckle 352.5 the ground might have been a little bit easier uh, for Vauban's race than it was for Honeysuckle but she was a a good deal quicker than him so what do we make of it well two smart prospects Vauban in particular and state man possibly going down the champion hurdle route but i suspect they are not at this stage giving honeysuckle any sleepless nights whatsoever that was the verdict this week a classic uh, verdict i hope you enjoyed all that we were able to bring you caribus at uh, the star no doubt about that that was a sensational 2000 guineas and the first three are very good horses indeed st james's palace stakes irish 2000 guineas and derby perhaps uh, for the first three home. Those, those might be the next port of call. And with the Moonlight as well, I think she's an Oaks filly. We saw two very good two-year-olds as well. And we saw some fantastic action at Punchestown. I'll see you again uh, next week. There'll be lots to fit in uh, once again. But uh, for now, thanks for watching.